You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Peak Performance. The Low Pressure Podcast is sponsored by CMH Heli Skiing, where you can choose from 11 unique locations and experiences, including four, five, six, and seven day signature trips, the brand new single day trips. You can do small groups with just you, four friends, and a guide. Or the private and exclusive, where you get the whole place just to yourself. So find your next adventure at cmhheli.com. The Low Pressure Podcast is also sponsored by Peak Performance. There are many ways to make it down a mountain, but the best line is your line. And the adventure is there, so make it yours. Visit peakperformance.com and get the gear to unlock your free ride spirit. I we're, hear you. We're good. I was like, oh, people are going to be judging me. It's true. Don't mess up, Dyak. Yeah, right. Cheers. <laughs> Don't gnarlier than any line you're going to ski this year. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't mess up, Dyak. I got some heavy hitting questions for you. Oh, God. I don't actually. These, mm. are, these are all the questions I, I've written down. I show everybody this. Oh. Wow. No questions. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk nice. about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, do you want to talk about carpentry or skiing? Because those are the two things I know how to do. Oh, for real? Do you were you were a carpenter? Yeah, carpenter in the summers, half you, my life, six months out of the year. Carpenter. Do you, do you still do that now? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was actually wondering. I'm like, is he just like full on pro skier all the time? I wish. No, not quite all the time. No. No, but you you, you seem like the kind of guy that likes that kind of stuff, though. I am, dude. I've got it's the way I was raised and. I just kind of got that Michigan, Midwest, strong work ethic. It's the way I was raised. It's, um, yeah, you just have to be doing something. Totally. Right? Like, no down days, really. It's always like, always something to do, right? Are you that, like, are you like that guy with skiing, too, where you're like, you can't just sit around. You're like, I gotta go do something. Correct. I get, like, anxiety, like, especially, like, a day like right now. It's sunny out. Yeah. And my body needs a break. I, like, I need a day off. Like, I took a some good crashes the other day so my neck is sore back sore and still i'm like i need a day off and then i'll like take care of some chores and bills life stuff and then i'm like uh you know you saw you walk out the front door and there's just like the mountains are right there yeah there's like lines like you can see them literally right from your door with your coffee yes like do you ever just go for a quick lap up there with the dog 100 percent. that's yeah that's, that's where. our spot no way yeah yeah, there's a bunch of stuff around here to ski, and it's like super mellow. It's not too high consequence and low angle, and totally. Oh, see, I wish we had that in Whistler. Right. Like, I, I can take Cedar up to like maybe the Duffy, like up an access road or something. But as soon yeah. as you get beyond that, everything just goes straight up. Right. And like you know, when you watch like like touring videos and people have dogs and they're going across a slope that's like. 30 degrees and they're traversing and the dog's doing this and that. I'm just like, what <laughs> is going on? Like yeah. the idea of like, of like touring with the dog is awesome. Yeah. As long as it's in the right place where it's just like that. Right. Right. And but that, when it's steeper, it's actually easier for the dog. As long as, because the, it's like gravity can do the work. True. As long as conditions are safe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's my, my, like the one big thing, right. Is like, right. You know, I was talking this, we had this conversation with someone and we're like, how oh, do you put a transceiver on your dog? They're like, no. Right. Because I can either dig you out or I can dig the dog out. Right. I'm like, I could tell you what I'd want to dig out first. <laughs> but, but like when it comes down. Morally. Da- yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but when, when it comes down to, I think the person kind of takes precedent on putting the transceiver on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Afraid so. And then like I've heard of dogs just being like, they're just so determined. They'll just wriggle themselves out sometimes. Dude, I, I got to admit, I feel bad. I, I was skiing this thing a couple years ago and took winter up this like coulard with me and you know it was really dumb because of course there was like nowhere for her to go Mm -hmm. and she got sloughed down the the bottom section of this coulee like I skied a couple turns and I'm like come on girl and she like comes down and I skied a couple more turns waited and she just went barreling in front of me and then she's standing at the bottom like waiting for me and i'm like oh shit dude and like go 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 <laughs> I, skied, I skied down and sure enough dude she got 
like my slough came through and tumbled her. She got tumbled a couple times and it was like, oh, poor girl. Oh, God. And but, she gets up, shakes off, and she's like, yeah, that was totally. rad. Let's do it again. <laughs> she got like tumbled by the slough. And then like as the slough is like rolling, she's just like is getting back to her feet and keeps running like she didn't even know anything happened but I, that's wild have you ever seen did you ever I see that really uh, that clip that went that pops up every year or so of like a crazy avalanche and they zoom in and there's that little rabbit oh that's yeah. like ripping across the top of it yeah this yeah like tiny white little rabbit like you could have watched it a hundred times and not noticed him yeah totally. he's just like just skipping over off like boulders as they're like yeah it's like the ultimate game of like wipeout I wonder how many animals die in avalanches. Probably lots. You think? You'd think so, right? Like I think they're just like like mountain goats and like ibexes and like all those like high alpine. Right. And then like you see every once in a while you'll see like a wolverine up on the up there or like a like a bear or something. Like right. we were in in um, up near Joffrey once, and I was with uh, Tobin Siegel and I don't remember who else. This has got to be like fifteen years ago. And we were rolling over his own, and there was this just trench, this massive trench right through the middle of the slope. And it was just a bear. Oh, yeah. That was like trudging somewhere. And it was like the snow, and then this big hole that just went on like a ton, like a, like in a cartoon. Right. Like, well, a, like he's still up. And it was a big bear. It had to be a grizzly, I think, up there. Tis the season, man. Like, I was just going to say, I was out the other day, the ski touring, and there's, uh, we're starting to get mountain lions up here. They're migrating. We they've never really lived in Tahoe, you know. Maybe a stray one or two you'd mm -hmm. see, but now they're like more deer are migrating up here, mm -hmm. and so more predators are migrating up here. And I don't know if you heard like last week. It's all winter. Good. It's all good. Um, last week there was these two kids down in the foothills that got attacked by a mountain lion. Really, two brothers, and one of them got mauled to death. No. Yeah, gnarly. Oof. So it's like a scary thing for me because I've always said that. It's like, oh, we don't have to worry about grizzlies. We don't have to worry about rattlesnakes. We don't have to worry about right. mountain lions. It's like mountain it's, mountains for wussies because yeah. we don't have to worry about yeah. anything. And it's like black bears too. And those ones are like, yeah. they don't really want anything to do with you. They're not actively hunting you. And if right. you get you into- walk up and pet them you, most of the time. Almost. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I think people probably try that. but Yeah, well, that's wild. I always think like- you know, when you're walking your dog or you're doing something, your mind just wanders. And, yeah. And there's a, right near where I live, there's like a, like a trail network, like a public park. It's a big forest, but they have like the signs where it's like, these are some of the animals you can encounter. And it's a bobcat. It has tuft ear flaps. And then there's a picture from a mountain lion. So you yeah. read the thing and then walk by and look at it and be like, what would I do if I ever got attacked by a mountain lion? You die. Well, because there's that dude, <laughs> that's that, what there's that, dude that fought one and like killed it. Cause it came after him and he ended up, I think getting behind it and he choked it out. No way. Yeah. 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 Look, I'll, I'll show you the, I'll show you the, the article later, but he was like, it was a big story and he was just ended up getting in close contact and then just cause he's, you know, a mountain lion could be up to 200 pounds. Yeah. But like, the side, but That's it, why but, I said you would die. There's like a very, very slim chance that you're going to win that fight. Right. But if he's in close, even if you have like a knife and you're like stabbing this thing. Yeah. It's just like survival. Yeah. I always think of that clip. You've probably seen it where the mountain lion tackles this goat and they free fall off like a 50 foot cliff. Oh yeah. The land on rock and then they fall off like another hundred foot cliff and they just tumble like close to a thousand feet of this mountainside. And yep. then the next shot is like the mountain lion just dragging the yeah, goat yeah. away. And you're snow, like, snow leopard up in, in Nepal. I've seen that. You're like, how did he survive that? Yeah. That was nuts. Cause like, sure they're supple and stuff, but like just the blunt force trauma of how hard they hit on all of those stages is wild. It just like then goes he, to show how tough they are and how yeah. resilient. And that's why I'm like, you know, if you're like stabbing this thing, if it's like got you from behind and you're like stabbing it with a knife. Yeah. It's not going to be phased. He's probably eating it's his just dinner. Be he's, like, like, he's like, oh, man, it's going to hurt tomorrow. I'll be like, oh, this is good. But it tastes so good. <laughs> it tastes so good. Um, but I think he I think he like got behind it and like was able to like MMA right. move it. So wrap his leg around it and, and like choke him out just so he lost well, his wind. Hold on to that tip. Right. Maybe so, that'll save you. Yeah, I always think about it too. And I'm like, well, what would I do? I'm like, look around for a rock to smash in his head or something like that. Yeah. But this is... Uh, great conversation to get things rolling but yeah <laughs> but like when you're walking the dog and your mind wanders it's like what would i ever do if i got attacked she'd she'd be right there yelling at it. she's a she escorts bears off the property yeah pretty often yeah she hates them doesn't hate yeah. them but she's like i mean she gets right in their ass 
if there's a bear in the yard, she's right after it. Well, my cousin's dog, uh, same thing, always like chases the bears off. And last summer, mama bear with her cubs, and he's a German shepherd, and he goes like running out, barking at the bear. And mama bear's like started go up the tree, because he usually trees them, right? Mm hmm. And then Mama Bear is like, uh uh, not with my kids here. Turned around, swatted him. Oh, wait. Hey. And just like ripped him open. It was like insides were falling out. Luckily, my cousin, like, because it was at night, so it could have been like the dog was just out there, but luckily my cousin was there. Right. Was able to get him, get him into the truck, like to the vet, emergency surgery, like close to losing his dog. No way. And it's like, Black bears are typically not like that, right? But they'll protect, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen her and another dog like chase a big bear into the forest and then two little bears. I'm like, Well, oh, get back here now. Right. Like she doesn't get close enough. She's just kind of a pest, just a hassler. Like, you're not welcome here, get out of here. Mm -hmm. Chases them out of the yard. We had a neighbor that didn't like her just because oh. she barks and whatever. She's not a big dog person. Right. I'm like, your dog's pooping in our yard. I'm like, she's no, she's not, because she poops in the woods. I've trained her. She won't poop anywhere, but like either in the right. woods or directly on like the only bush around. It's weird, but it's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I always have a bag, but I, n I rarely have to use one, which is sweet. Yeah. So anyways, we're in the backyard one day and uh, this bear comes through the yard and was walking through their, like kind of through my yard and then towards their yard. And they've got like two little kids, like four years old, two years old or something like this. And Cedar yeah. Solomon ripped into the yard and rah, 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 chased this bear away. And she's like, get him, Cedar. And I'm like, oh, nice. Okay. We're on, they're on our side now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to, I haven't heard them complain about her since. I haven't heard her say a damn word. Nice. That's yeah. all it took. Yeah, exactly. Right. Just one little scare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, get away, bear. You're not going to eat these kids today. Um, <laughs> so we're in your house. Yes, sir. Really nice house. Thanks for the hospitality. Of course. And uh, in Tahoe. South Lake, Great. and uh, we had you on the show. I think I looked. I think it was episode seventy-five. Okay, which would have been like maybe season four back in the day. Okay, so you're saying that's like six years ago? Yeah, I think so. I would guess longer. Would have been like 20, 2016 or twenty seventeen. Probably twenty seventeen because I had the dog. I had my dog then. Mm -hmm. So we definitely been, did. So it would have been that following. So it would have been that following. So it would have been like late twenty sixteen, early twenty seventeen. Yep, because it was. I was in Whistler for the Mountain Collective with Solomon. Right, right, right. So that was December. Yeah. So that was like 2017, 2017. or so. Okay. And you had been like competing uh, on the free ski world tour before it combined. Right. Um, and then, because I was looking at some of the trophies in the room there, the spare room. Oh, yeah. Just getting some ideas. And then you had a uh, an IF3 ski and a powder award for like breakthrough skier, rookie of the year. Yeah. And it was 2015. Yeah. And I was just trying to think back on that. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Because he had been competing. But then that's like just when he switched over to like film skiing and stuff and then like exploded onto the scene. Yeah. So it's been like 10 years now or so, but about a decade <clears throat> into your into your ski career. Right. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. It's uh, it was a trip then to. You know, basically, I didn't get sponsored and like considered i don't know like a higher level athlete till i was 30 years old right and i'm 40 now mm -hmm. and the crazy thing is i'm still progressing i'm still learning and i think especially as like a big mountain skier you know you you're able to um possibly peak later you know and it's like i'm watching i'm a big fan of the world tour so i'm like watching all these young guys marcus gogan and the maxes and you yeah. know all these kids were in their young 20s and i'm like dude i didn't even i didn't learn how to ski till i was like 19 basically right so i'm like these kids are already so dialed and so good and so calculated at this age imagine what they're gonna be doing when they're my age and they've like really honed in and like i mean they're already so dialed but they're just gonna keep progressing and progressing and progressing it's yeah. just gonna be Start adding some experience and some wisdom to that natural raw talent and skill. Yeah, but still so impressive with the wisdom and like how well they choose their line choices and transitions and watching them compete on the back was amazing, dude. Um, it just, you know, showed uh, a lot of skill and, you know, it's not just like, oh, we're just going to go huck and pray. It was just like <laughs> yeah. calculated moves and... Um, 
Max hit Zig's line. I don't know if anyone had like skied that top move that he did. And the same thing with Marcus did that new double. And it's just like, these guys are showing so much like, and they're like 19, 20, 21, 22 years yeah, old. Dude. It's mind boggling. That's it's so impressive to me. It's so fun to watch, but sometimes you get a little scared, <laughs> you know, like being like working with the tour tour and working close with the tour with the free ride guy and stuff. Yeah. Like you get to chat with them. And then sometimes you're like, I don't know. Like that's like, sometimes you go to a face and like, I'm, I feel scared today before right. it happens because you know what they, they can do. And then some days then you talk to, talk to some of them and you're like, Oh no, I'm not scared. Yeah. You, like they're just stone cold. Like, yeah, I think I'm going to, they're so casual about it. Right. Nervous, but like, I think I'm going to hit this and do it that way. Yeah. And I'm look I'm looking at it going, what? Right. But there's no line there. And then sure, <laughs> sure enough, you're like, Oh, well, there's a line there for you. Yeah. And, and maybe like, like one or two other humans on earth. Right. Right. Like, dude, what if you crash there? What? No, I'm, but there's, I'm but, just going to 360 into that. Yeah. Like, like for okay. us, for us, it's like, well, what if you crash there? But for them, they're like, no, no, there's no crash. Yeah. Like, totally. they, they don't even think about that. Right. Because yeah. when you're like 19, 20, you haven't really had a lot of crash, ex- maybe not as much crash experience, you know right. what I mean? As like the old dogs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You've gone. So you're like. Like you said, you started kind of at the end. You were like free riding and, and like competing in the, in your late twenties. Correct. But then like yeah, you you come into the game a little older. Yeah. Which is sweet. And then now, like you said, you're hovering around forty. Yep. And still one of the most, I think, exciting and like interest driven, like interest collecting people. It's early. We're we're in our pajamas. Just to let people know, <laughs> this is the first one I've done in pajamas. It's great. But <laughs> but like. Like I tell, I've been telling people forever, even before I, I mentioned this to you, I have three last year when you came up, I'm like, your Instagram was one of my favorites, like without question, because it's just you skiing fast, gnarly lines. They're all within like a minute long. So they yeah. fit perfectly within that format. The GoPro is done. You edit it well. Sometimes you do some voiceovers, but it's just like every time you watch one of these lines, you're like, God damn. And they're all different. Like you see, the, the, this, it just... It makes me think that this zone is just so wild, but then also it's just like you know what it is you want to ski, right? There's like yeah. everybody has their different style, and I'm like that's just so it's just unique to you. It seems yeah, and I think uh, kind of what I was saying before, it's like I have the maturity now in my skiing, and it's taken me a long time to get here, but when I look at the mountain and I'm like looking for lines, I know what I can actually do. Mm -hmm. It's not like roll the dice. Like, Oh, I think I can do that. It's like, no dude, I can totally hit that air Mm -hmm. land there. There's enough space between those rocks and I'll be able to take off that. Or, you know, I could double stage through that or, you know, whatever it might be. It's totally that I've skied enough. I've crashed enough. I, you know, I'm out almost every single day because like I was saying, I have so much anxiety. Like when it's sunny, I'm just like, I got to be out there skiing. So (laughs) I'm very aware of what my abilities are. Yeah. And granted, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm perfect and I don't crash because I certainly do. As I started saying at the beginning of that, this, like I took a pretty bad crash the other day, but, uh, I think it's, it's really like, knowing what you're capable of and even if it's hard pack and crappy snow like okay maybe i shouldn't be going over a 20 foot air today right the transition's good so you can snipe that landing and whatever else um so i mean you'll see in my posts it's like i ski a lot of crap snow and i know a lot of other people um other people that i worked with filmed with etc they're like whoa the snow's not pile it's not good enough it doesn't support what we want to do and i'm like I think it comes from the competition mentality. It's like, right. well, maybe you can't hit that air, but you could still hit that air and come into the line this way and, and turn know, it into something and turn it into something. Is the run out smooth? Mm-hmm. That's all that really matters. Right. <laughs> like, can yeah. you make it to the run out at speed and be able to shut it down in the run out? Like, so that's kind of, that's the way I see it. Yeah. If it's, if it's smooth in the run out and you can shut it down. Right. Like, do you think do you think that work ethic is because you started a bit late and you were like okay I got a bit of a late start so I need to like really do a little bit more I got to be a bit extra I got to make sure that I I don't have the luxury of saying oh it's not pow so not getting something I, no no I don't think it's that at all I think it's uh, 
just kind of the way I'm wired. You know, I'm competitive. I'm very stubborn, very driven. You know, as, as soon as I started doing film skiing, it's like I want to come up with rad shots. You know, mm -hmm. I want to have something that people are going to be like inspired by and stoked on. So, yeah, that's kind of like what has driven my film skiing. Um, but also it's like, that's just who I am. Like I want to, I want to push myself to my limits. And like I was saying, I have a good idea of what my limit is now. Mm -hmm. And so it's cool to ride that edge and not going too far. But, um, yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it's anything other than that's the way I'm it's just I'm you wired. Are. It's just how you and like do it's it. the same thing with carpentry. With the carpentry gig, I've worked with different crews and different people, and some guys are like dragging their feet, and it's like, no, dude, we got shit to get done today. Right? Like, let's go. Uh, I'm sorry you partied last night, or you're hungover, or if you are hungover, like whatever. That eight, was eight your choice. Eight o'clock still starts at eight o'clock. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Like, let's get shit done. Mm -hmm. And you know, my boss is the same way. My dad's the same way. That's how I was raised. And it's like I didn't get to go play on weekends like my dad always had chores for us and right. work we had to do at the house and that's not to say we never got to play or have but fun yeah, the, but it was always like work then play get your stuff work done. then play you know is that kind of how you are with like you know with the with your construction crews when you're doing that kind of work and then when you're say out on like a film trip or with a crew you know guys everybody's there for a job but it, there's always those kind of people that are a little bit slower maybe they're yeah. You know, like some people are better at this, some people are slower at that. Are you the kind of like the guy that's like, are you the foreman of the, of the ski crews as well? A hundred percent with my mountain state crew. Yeah, yeah. Those poor guys. I'm like, you know, especially this time of year, like we shot the other day and we were up at 4 a.m. We didn't get, we were up at 4 a.m. on sleds by six because um, we had a little bit of a drive and then we didn't get back to the cars till 8 p.m. It's a big day. Dude, we're all completely bagged, and it's like, well, tomorrow's gonna be a good day again. So, go to bed. Go to bed, boys. We got a big day tomorrow, and it's like, you know, I'm just driven. I want to get good, good footage, and the windows are so short, right? Because right? like, 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 like that was a couple days ago, and then today, I want to yeah. just clarify: I'm not keeping you off the hill. It's hot and sticky. <laughs> <laughs> But like it's it just it just when you when it's good you gotta get after it you gotta maximize it hundred percent it's a privilege to have this job and it it is a job and I treat it as such yeah like when we're out there we're out there to work it's not I'm not out there to drink beers with the boys and just hang out like no dude we're here to get shit done like I don't like we don't need to be telling stories after each line we're losing sun like yeah I'm very serious about it mm -hmm. and it's like we're out here to get shit done let's go you wanna Tell stories and hang out. Do it on your own time, not on work time. Or, so. or in the truck or something on the way back. Or yeah, whatever, right? and it's like... Interesting. Do you ever get a chance to go out ripping around and going out and where you can just have that fun day? Are you able to like separate them? Or is it's, it? If, it's or is honestly it, hard for me now. If you're always out, you're always out. Yeah. But then sometimes... Sometimes you need to have a day with your boys and then go for a rip and then sit at the top on your sleds and crack a beer in the sun and just take that minute to just enjoy yeah. being there. Like... So you're, you've, well, we, we can get into his perfect segue. So you're currently filming your third installation of Mountain State, yep. um, which I'll get you to kind of do a full summary on in a second. But, you know, it's basically like a love story to this area and to, and to this zone that is, is lesser known. Right. Right. And because you love it so much and you've gotten so much out of it, like you, you work there, like you said, like it's your, it's your job to be there, but you've chosen to do this project because it is so special and you love it so much. Right. So why won't you, or maybe, maybe not won't, won't is the wrong word, but why don't you just go and allow yourself to just spend a day, put the cameras down, go with your friends, have a beer and just enjoy it. Right. And be there. Do you know what I mean? Instead, I think, of, instead of just always having to have a, an objective. Right. And you know, again, that's kind of how my brain's wired and I'm always like, never waste a moment to get stuff done. Yeah. It's like, even in the summer, it's like, I'll be working on the house and working on this and working on different side jobs, whatever. Um, but 
Yeah, it's it's tough. I was saying that to my wife yesterday. I was like, when's the last time I skied for fun? Right. And I actually did have a really good day out with some homies last week. We went and skied some coolars and hiked some coolies. And it was like, I was like, this is sweet. Like, there's no, the biggest thing for me is not having expectation. Right. Cause then that's when I say this all the time zero expectation. And then I can go out and just have an epic day. Right. But when I'm like, oh, dude, it snowed, it's going to be epic. And like, oh, we got to get, I got to, even if we're not filming, like, this is a good day for me to get content. I need content. Mm-hmm. So I got to ski some sick shit today or whatever. Um, it is really hard for me to separate. But as we get into spring here, I was like out yesterday and it's like getting hot. It was like 60 degrees. It was yeah. Very hot. And I'm like, all right, I think I'm ready for this. I'm ready to like not be stressed about skiing, not be stressed about content creation, not be stressed about um, producing my film Mm -hmm. and ready to just go hang with the boys, drink beers, hit park jumps, you know, barbecue in the parking lot, like just go camp, ski coolars down in the Southern Sierra and like enjoy it for what it is because I do, I can look at myself and know that I take it too serious. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's a privilege to have this job and I've worked so hard to get here and I, you know, I can internalize it and rationalize it and be like, dude, you're not, you're not going to like lose this opportunity because of like, you didn't pull your GoPro out on this run. Right. Yeah. But in the same breath, if you have that mindset all the time, then you're not going to get the content. You're not going to get the footage. You're not going to get the pieces you need to be successful and right. And it is your job, you know what I mean? And it's, and it's interesting too, to me, because you, like you said, construction and all that sort of stuff, like it's time to work and it's time to play it and they're separated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it seems like I would, it seems to me that you would need to bring that into your skiing career too. Right. Like you said with your dad, you do chores and then you can go and play and do stuff. Yeah. Well, currently your job and play are kind of muddled together. Right. So maybe, right. maybe that's what's hard. Maybe you got to find uh, work on finding like a, a, like a, like a boundary for yourself right? to like, be like, all right, I've done what we needed to do it, yeah. or, and now I can chill a little bit. And then maybe that's not necessarily within one day, but maybe it's like three or four days of giving or, Hey, we got some good stuff. Now let's totally. enjoy it and reward ourselves, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's hard for me to find that balance. Yeah. I struggle with it for sure. But, but you enjoy uh, work too though. Oh, I love it. Dude. Yeah. You I know, love it. Yeah. And like, it's very rewarding to get six shots, to ski rad lines. And like, I do, I love my job. It's, it can be stressful, you know, just like the expectation of sponsors and the expectation of your fan base. And, you know, like people expect a certain thing out of my content. Do you, right? Let me ask you this. So I'm going to, I'm going to dig into this a little bit, right? Yeah. I knowing you for this long time and watching what you do and then having these conversations, <clears throat> I wouldn't think it's offside to say your expe- expectation of yours is way higher than what your sponsors are and what your fans are, that sort of thing. Like hundred percent. Right. So I have very high expectations of myself. Right. Right. And it's like, well, it, I need to expect more than you expect of me than that way. There's no way anybody can ever be disappointed. <laughs> right you, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's like if i do this then you can't say a thing and sure. i'm and i'm comfortable with that you know Fair. but like do you think that you put too much on yourself yeah yeah i do that's fair and i'm aware of it yeah cool and i try and like i try and manage it but easier said than done and but then also you know what though but it does pay off right yeah. like that's your job and whatnot but like looking like like i said looking at your instagram it's you found like kind of your thing you know some people have like their own little themes that are that run through their with their story if if it's a good instagram there's usually some sort of good theme that runs through right it's all similar style photos or it's all similar style reels which is like what you totally. do which is like i'm just gonna ski top to bottom point of view it's gonna be fucking awesome or gnarly and rowdy bad. or rowdy or, yeah, <laughs> exactly and it's just consistent and you manage to like do that so i think with maybe like an expectation of maybe like fans or, or people that are, are following you, they expect to see that just because you've created this consistency and you do it right. better than anybody in that style and more consistently than anybody. So maybe like if you did something, if you posted something different, they'd be like, Oh, that's interesting. 
because it's because it's different, but not necessarily worse or better. Right. Right. But I think the 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 reason that you are so successful with that is that consistency of of lines. Right. Which I think it, is which I think is awesome. And it's being super driven and mm-hmm. taking advantage of every moment I can. Right. Yeah. So then back to Mountain State. Yeah. Sorry for digging into your brain here. A little, no, a little psychology good, session. Dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> I like throwing people off a little bit and finding out what makes them tick. Um, yeah. But so, to explain what Mountain State is. This is so we're in the third year of it. Yeah. So, honestly, the premise of Mountain State is skiing unique places where people don't think to ski. Right. Um, that's what inspired the first two years being in Nevada. And Nevada is something that I've been, you know, for the last three or four years has been like full obsession, mm-hmm. but it's just a place, uh, I used to drive through there competing all the time, you know, going to Colorado, going to Taos, going to Utah. Um, and it's like, you're always driving through these mountain ranges and looking up and it's like, dude, there's so much cool skiing out here. Well, back then I was more of like a resort skier. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have, you know, I'd ski tour some local stuff around here, but it wasn't like now where I ski tour every single day, you know? Um, so it was almost like inaccessible in a way because I didn't have the experience. I didn't have the equipment, you know, I was in those days, I was ski touring in race boots and Alpine trekkers. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) So... (laughs) It was a little bit different back then because people are always like, how did you drive through it? And you never stopped. And that's like, well, I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't know I, I could. Didn't, I didn't have the necessary tools. Right. Is what it boils down to. Right. And now I do have those tools and there's just endless adventure out in Nevada. There's endless like. And it's so sparsely populated too. Unexplored terrain. And what's, what's really cool about it to me is the accessibility. Mm-hmm. So it's basin and range. You're just driving through the desert. Boom. Mountains come up and there's some old mining road or some old logging road or something that you can drive up pretty far to the snow and get access gain access to these mountains easily and then there's like some little farming town or mining town or something and it's cool to like mingle with these people and like try and get into the local bar or like some local you know diner or something like that and uh that's been really fun too just like on my last trip meeting a bunch of farmers and went into this diner and had breakfast and sat down with these farmers and chatted for a half hour about what they do and what their winners like and, you know, just all these things. Um, but what's really cool to me is, you know, living in Tahoe, going to visiting like Whistler area, Jackson, like these places are so crowded. And like, even as a backcountry skier, it's hard to get away from people. Right. And that's, what mountain state is all about to me is getting away from people exploring solving cracking the code as i like to call it like finding these mountains i usually find them on google earth like oh these mountains look cool and you like start looking for different terrain features and then like okay well i know i want to go to this mountain well how do i get there and you like start zooming in are there roads well let me pull up my gaia okay let's see oh there's some old forestry road here you probably get in that forestry road and then you go there. Well, that forestry road's closed. You can't get in there. Oh, shit. Well, what are we going to do now? How do we gain access? And then like solving this puzzle and problem solving. And that's what I really like about carpentry and my job as well is like, how do we fix this? How do we make this right? And right. that's what's really fun about the project to me is cracking the code, figuring out how to gain access and then skiing stuff that's probably never been skied. Yeah, right. And that's not that's not what it is for me. People are always like, oh, was that a first descent? It's like, I don't care. It's my first time skiing it. Mm-hmm. I've never seen a video of someone skiing it and being like, oh, yeah, you got to make a right footer there over that rock or whatever. It's like, I don't care if it's first descent or not. It's, it's new to me. It's adding adventure for me, exploration for me, and it's exciting. And that's like what really drives me right now. That's really cool. When when you go and try and find these little zones and figure out this puzzle, are you writing like full notes of like we came here, this is the coordinates, this is how we came into this zone, really for all, all of it? Up there, dude. You do so much of it, and I it's do, like, I just do a lot of homework. Yeah. like I spend you know hours. You could ask my wife or my buddies that I work with. I'm just like, 
always on my computer with really great posture, hunched over. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to figure it out. Interesting, because it's like, like, you know, you go to his own... I'm sure the, the really good lines or the really good access, you're like, this is sweet. I got to remember this one, right? Oh, yeah, but like, I've done so much homework and studied it so hard. Like, there's no way that I would forget right. like, how to get in there. Right. Right. Interesting. So that's, that's a question I have as well is like, we were talking yesterday and I think uh, we were talking about people being like, yeah, don't blow up a spot, man. Like, blowing yeah. up Nevada, you're telling me that. And you're like, yeah. dude, Nevada's like, like no one's going there. I love it. And I think for people to say that, it's like, you don't understand like how difficult it is. Mm -hmm. Like we're not just like showing up like, oh, let's pull out the guidebook. Okay. Yep. There it is. Let's go. It's right there, boys. Uh, two, two mile approach and we're in. It's yeah. like long ass days, long approaches, like to ski these short lines, you know, to ski like you're saying, like the quick, like one minute lines. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like 1,000 foot, 1,500 foot lines. And that's like what makes for good film skiing, I think. Yep. You know, because these peaks are like three to 5,000 feet long. Like you could ski all the way down, but it gets pretty boring. It's like the top yeah. 1,000, 1,500 feet because these aren't like, uh, you know, it's not like the Rockies where it's like this. Yeah, they're like, it's an older range feet. and there's a lot more weathering and there's a lot more yeah. like coolies and it's shoots like and, and it's just deep up top and then benches. Yeah. You know, a lot of the stuff that I'm do seeing. You, do you think that, so when you go into a zone like this, and obviously you're looking at like Google Maps and Guy and stuff, are you yeah. like, oh, I hope this is going to be a cool line? Like, you, you yeah, get skunked. Totally do you get good. skunked a lot? But like this area, it seems like everywhere you seem to go, there's that. Like you said, the kind of buttresses at the top or yeah. that will like have eroded over time to create these lines. Yeah. And is it where you go into these zones? Is it most of the time you'll just expect something to be there because that's just like what yeah. the region is like, the geography of the region is like? And that's like what's really fun about it. Yeah. Because you're like, I think, I think this is going to be cool. I think it's going to be dope. And then you like get out there and it's like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to look like? And then you like come ski turn around the corner and then you get that first glimpse on it, dude. It's like so rewarding, but yeah, I've totally screwed myself before. And like, you're like, Oh dude, look at this. That thing's going to be like spiny or coulars or whatever. And then you like put all this work in to get out there. And then you're like, that's just a cliff, dude. There's no, there's no snow in there. <laughs> you can't ski down that shit. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that's part of the fun though. That's, that's pretty sweet. And I was thinking about like you not caring about naming stuff because you could have like 50 Josh Dyack lines right now just coming up with like creative names for all of them. Totally. But you ski so many of them, you probably just run out. Yeah, totally. And it's like... JD1, JD2, JD3. Like I said, it's it's not about any of that for me. I don't, I don't really care. It's just, it's fun for me to go mm -hmm. find these spots. So. so you said you use Gaia to use like Fat Map or, or like Onyx Backcountry or any of those? No. No? I like the Gaia Topo. Um, I did try using... I've actually tried using both those apps mm -hmm. and I couldn't, you know, and that was years ago. And a lot, they've come at, a long way. At that time, I liked the Gaia better and so I've just kind of stuck with that. I'm really only using the Topos for that and... Mm -hmm downloading the maps because a lot of these places we go you don't have service so once you're in there it's nice to have the downloaded topos and right you can do different overlays and you know different layers etc but what uh, do you do for safety when you're out there just look at in reach and yeah and like obviously tell a friend and in reach and you know we got we've got a like minimal rescue kit and like little tarp sled to get out if we need like a heli rescue but you know, that's, that is one thing about being out there. You're, you, you kind of got to minimize your risk and mm -hmm. hope that, uh, try and play it safer than you would if you're moments away from a yeah. uh, hospital, you know? Yeah, exactly. But right. it's tough because like, you're still trying to showcase these mountains, showcase your skiing and like make something that's very entertaining to watch and cool to see. Um, but yeah, I definitely like, I think we tone it back a little bit when um, you're way out in the boonies. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and, and your crew, like I know like you've done so much training and every year Solomon and like your sponsors will do like a two or three day, like mountain skills course and safety yeah, course. Yeah. And then the guys that you're out with, obviously I'm sure you require them to have that sort of thing. And then do you do tests with them and then do training with them before you start just so you're comfortable? Yeah, totally dude. We do like safety day together and mm -hmm. beacon training and rescue scenarios and just talk about, 
what to do, how to. Right. Cause you had, a, a, a you had to put some of those skills to the test recently. Um, yeah, I'm afraid so. Yeah. With your, your partner and your wife, Casey. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and you know, I feel comfortable bringing it up just cause she's been very open about it just through her Instagram and whatnot, but she got caught in a slide and she actually showed the footage on Instagram the other day Yeah, and I got chills from it. Yeah. Um, you know, got swept away, wasn't fully buried, but you were right in there right away. Yeah. You know, not saying anything, just getting to work. I was like skiing down with the avalanche. Basically I was right. on the bed surface. Like, I don't know if you saw, I like, did. I was like with the debris going down in, in my but, mind. I'm like, get her dude. I go, go get it. It was just instinct, dude. You right. always, you know, you always wonder what's going to happen or how, you know, it's funny when we do, uh, refreshers and whatnot every year with Solomon, I get like nervous. I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, I hope I'm not like the worst one at the search. I hope I can, yeah, you know, and, and that's maybe part of the competitive mindset, but also like not wanting to fail. Right. And I'm like, dude, I hope I find like, you know, there's going to be three transceivers on this one. And like, I hope I can find all three in a good time and I hope I don't mess up. Right. And, you know, I'm grateful for all that training because once it was like, I'm in this real scenario, it, you stop I wasn't thinking. thinking. You just go into this it's work just mode. like, yeah. you know, I'm starting to lose sight of her. She's going in the debris. It's like, I need to get to a point where I can see because mm-hmm. she went over that cliff and it's like, I need to see what's going on. Yeah. I need to have eyes on her, etc. So I think lucky for me, my brain you know, just reacts. And I think that's kind of what helps with my skiing too, yep. is that you have so much practice that you're not thinking you're reacting. It's almost like you go into like your reptile brain and this is just right. what we do, you know? And yeah. like, and I was thinking about this on the drive, um, earlier mm-hmm. and you know, you're in these back country zones with your guys way out there filming for this project and you're like, Hey, we're finding these lines and like, we have to be on it all the time. So you're yeah. ready for any eventuality. Yeah. But then the thing you're ready for in those places happens in a different spot with different people where maybe you're not expecting you're just riding with your wife and riding with your buddies. Right. So it's like a freak accident, man. Yeah. So it's like, then it just shows like that stuff can happen at any time, but you're probably in a different mindset then as well. Cause you're with your family, with your friends, you're having a time, you are actually having a day enjoying yourself. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's like, almost like this shouldn't happen now. Right. Right. Because I'm not ready. I don't expect for this to happen now. But when I'm out there, I'm ready and I'm expecting that this is a possibility. But when you're in that mindset, in that mind frame, maybe you're not expecting it. Right. So uh, sure. did, did you think of that? I'm like, like, Jesus, like that's this is when it happens, you know? Yeah. You know, I think, like I said, there's no thinking like in the moment. Yeah. It's just react. Right. How do I fix it? How mm-hmm. do I make it right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe later... I haven't really thought of it like that, to be honest. No. It was just like. Just was. It's, it, this, it, it is what it is and it was what it was. And yeah. You just, like you said, you just switch into that. It's go time mode. Yeah. Right. You've yeah, done yeah. all this training, all this training, and now it's just automatic. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. Cause I don't, like I said, like every time we do refreshers, it's funny that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like so self-conscious or whatever. Like, and I'm like nervous about like messing up on a refresher where it doesn't even matter. Right. But maybe that's kind of what. Well, that's when it does matter because that's when you're allowed to make those mistakes, right? Right. And maybe that's what kind of helps play into me being able to make the right reactions and, Mm -hmm. you know. Wild. Well, I'm glad everybody's safe and sound. And Yeah. That was was super lucky. It was a crazy freak thing. Um, And we got lucky, to say the least. Absolutely. Lucky, but also the fact that you were ready kind of adds to the luck, right? You yeah. got to be good to be lucky. You got to be lucky to be good. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. So like, with Mountain State, like you've won, like it's won awards. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I like, I want to get back to it just because I was driving. So as I told mm-hmm. you, I, I missed the turn off yesterday and drove yeah. like 10, 15 kilometers in the wrong direction. And I get out of the canyon and I'm heading out into the desert. I'm like, wow, yeah. this is beautiful. <laughs> like, I love this. Yeah. Like big rolling hills and you got the mountains back there and it's like all pastels because it was like sunset. I'm like, this is yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then I was seeing the the distance to destination kept getting farther and farther. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> in the wrong direction. <laughs> totally. So like ripped around. But one of the things that really stood out to me, especially in, especially in the last one, is just like these vistas 
and, and like the landscape and just the way you're able to capture that because you guys won was it a cinem, cinem, cinematography award for that uh we got nominated nominated for, for best c- cinematography right and then won best backcountry segment right 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 and so i remember watching this and just being like wow this is awesome like i want to go there yeah and that's you know that's that's the draw once you've been there and been a part of it it's right the like i was saying the basin and range is just so beautiful and so captivating and like inspiring you know like the brown desert like and like in the recent years with good precip like the desert's like alive all the sage is like like vibrant vibrant colors and you got these browns and vibrant colors and then rising into these just these white peaks it's so amazing dude and so beautiful and it, like I said, it's inspiring. And it's like every time we get up on it, there's so many mountain ranges in Nevada. You like get up on one peak and you're looking like 50 miles over to the next range. And you're like, whoa, what's that? Like pull out the binos. Like, like oh, I, I, there I, might be something out there for us. Yeah, I haven't been over there yet. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> pin. <laughs> exactly. Dude. Well, like you definitely displayed it, I think, well. Like you represented it very, very well. Yeah, thank Which you. is probably why those people that love that place were like, hey, dude, pump the brakes a little bit. Like it's still... There's not a lot of people here. It's still quiet, but yeah, you know, it's fun. I think it takes a special person to go out there. Yeah, because Are you, you got yourself go... special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. I agree. There's, I'm unique. Yeah, yeah, but it, it is like like you just explained it. It's 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 not easy to get there. It's a lot of work, but to go ski lines out it, there. It seems to me like the that work has paid off and what you're able to create. So the first two you said were kind of focused on Nevada. What's this next one that you're currently working on? Yeah. So year three, or I should say. And, uh, and, and to add to that question, how is it going to be slightly different from the first two? Okay. Without like divulging the whole, whole story, but, uh, so year three, same concept. Mountain state is all about going to remote ranges, places where people are not. And you know, that, opens the door. I am going to go outside in Nevada, probably still, you know, there's still so much on the plate in Nevada, so I'm not going to fully just walk away, probably do like one trip there or something. But, uh, you know, the idea is just to go to places where people don't ski. Mm -hmm. And so there's ranges in California outside of the Sierra Nevada. Um, there's ranges in Idaho, in Oregon, in Montana, you know, all over North America. I mean, Canada, endless, right? Um, but for now, I just want to get the place close to home and go explore all these spots that are like right there. And you can come back and sleep in your own bed. Well, no, it's still like yeah, everything's camper based. I got right. I bought a camper for the Mountain State project. Got this old six pack camper. She's a beauty. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about doing. You were just showing me. We were thinking about maybe trying to set up in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, it's not. It's, it's not nice quite big here. enough. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna have to put on pants for that one. It's cold outside. Yeah, but <laughs> but we're like my crew, my team. We're we're all pretty dedicated. It's full like ski bum style. We got three of us staying in that camper. Oh wow. Yeah. Fart box. Well, sometimes sure. But <laughs> more like. You know, you drive way out into these mountains and then we're usually spending like a week there. Mm-hmm. So like a week without showers because I don't have a fancy camper with a shower. Right. And, you know, we got a, a lot of food and we're just like, we actually eat really well. Do you bring like Salads two trucks? and veggies. Yep. So a truck with the sleds and like a truck with the camper and then like the base camp sort of thing? Yeah, truck, uh, one truck with the sled and then the camper and two sleds and, uh, you know, we like have a lot of campfires and cooking over the fire and chicken and steaks and fish. And, you know, we, we, we do it right. Yeah. Big days. You got to refuel, right? Yeah. And it's, it's exhausting because you get back to the truck and it's dark and it's late. And then it's like, all right, we got to start. Hazen's got to start, uh, uploading footage or downloading footage, whatever you call. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Trevor and I are like getting gear drying and like starting to prep meals and make food. And so, like a twelve-hour day doesn't end at twelve hours because no, you have so much more to do when you get back. It's nonstop work, you know. Right. And uh, it's a lot of work, but I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, the way I'm wired, it's like it works out good because I need to be busy. I can't like chill and relax. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, so. yeah. You establish. I love it, but that, <laughs> but it's a, it's a testament to like where you're at in like you've made this for yourself because right. of 
good content, good footage, consistency it yeah, yeah. pays off, man. Like, what did you say? Your Instagram's at like 115,000 or something like that. Yep. It's because the lines you post and the content you post is awesome. Yeah. Thank um, you. and you said you're trying to start doing more with YouTube too. Right. Yeah. That one's, uh, Oh, it's a new game to me and just trying to figure out. It's a puzzle. It's a new puzzle for you. It's a new puzzle. It's a, it's a tough one. It's a hard egg to crack. And, you know, I started doing this little series called One Track Mind. And the tough part is I didn't, I don't have like supporting B-roll footage to tell a story. Because you use most trying, of it? Well, I'm just trying to tell stories about these different lines that I ski. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you're going to tell a good story about it, okay, we showed up at the trailhead, uh, we had a uh, two mile sled in and then we got to the boundary and then it was a four mile hike from there. And then you're like getting all this B roll along the way. Well, that's not how we filmed it. We were just like, all right, get in, get let's, there, let's turn the cameras there, on, turn the cameras on, film the lines. So then I'm trying to like, that's why it's so much of me like, uh, like interview style telling a story about what happened and then I'm trying to find like okay what shot can I so I'm going through like digging through hard drives and like what could I use to like piece in and tell the story and right oh I've got this shot from like two years ago even though this isn't from this exact spot this is like a a shot that tells the story I'm trying to tell and so it's really difficult and like also having to like tell a story off a script versus like it's more natural for me to just be right. like, if I was like in the field with my phone doing selfies or something like, mm-hmm. all right, yeah, we're at this zone. We're at the trailhead, might hike in. And then you're like bushwhacking and whatever. Like that's way easier to like tell a story with like kind of how Cody's doing. Right. 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 Like kind of vlog style. So th- um, this year, are you doing a bit more of that because you're consciously, you're like, oh, I actually need this now. So now you're taking the time to get a little extra. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think in the future it'll be better. Um, but you know it's a learning learning process and something I'm completely new to and um, I don't know I watch it it's a little dry I'm like Ugh. I'm not like super stoked usually you know like I said I want to be proud of what I'm putting out right and I watch some of the episodes I'm done I'm like but you're but you that but that's proud, just because but that's just because you're 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 your own worst critic true right? and you always will be I'm my own worst critic everybody is right so yeah. there's people that are watching that are being like this is awesome right and I think. You know, I've had an, a number of comments where people are psyched on it and like, mm. oh, I can't wait for the next week. And this is my favorite series now. And, you know, that that makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. And then there's always the haters. I, yeah, I feel they, like YouTube has more haters than like Instagram. Um, I, 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 I have no idea. I don't I don't really know. The oh, wife's home. Casey's home. How's it going? Hey, Case. Hey. We're just talking. We just started getting into the chat about uh, YouTube. Oh, nice. Working on the YouTube puzzle, trying to figure out how to make that make that the next big thing. Because, like, yeah. you know, I, we've, we we uh, people were probably watching this on YouTube as well. And oh, that, yeah. And that's the same thing too. Is is you know, I try to be as consistent as possible with it. You know, cutting clips into uh, like cutting episodes into like little shorts, reels, right. that sort of thing, and putting those out. So yeah. we'll have those throughout the the, the summer. Um, and I think. It's just with with that kind of a, a platform, it's just, I think, consistency. Just keep putting stuff out and it's going to grow. So if yeah. you haven't yet, go subscribe and like and follow <laughs> if you're watching. And if yeah. you're listening, just subscribe. If you don't watch YouTube, just give us a, give us a follow. And, <laughs> and Josh too yeah, because he puts out good stuff. And we were saying last night, like all those lines that you have on Instagram, throw them on YouTube. Right. Because little people will watch them. Because like I find myself watching YouTube shorts, I think more than I watch Instagram. Oh, really? Now. Yeah. And then those people, and then there's those people that'll just be like more in- TikTok people. And there's more people that are like, sure. YouTube people and more people, Instagram people. Yeah. And it's just like, well, I have this content. I might as well show it to them too. Yeah. Show it to them too. And even if, you know, you're watching both and you see the same clip twice, well then good. Right. Repetition isn't a bad thing when you're, you know, trying to either promote yourself or promote something. Yeah. Fair. You know? And I think, um, you know, ultimately I see YouTube as an opportunity. You know, I feel like with Instagram, people just see like with my feed anyway, it's just like skiing lines, shredding lines. Mm -hmm. Um, and the idea with 
YouTube is for people to kind of get to know me a little better, mm-hmm. more about who I am, what makes me tick. And uh, that's the, well, that's the, the bonus about YouTube. Cause you can do those lines on the shorts page, yeah, but then tie it back into those more kind of like in, longer. Yeah. Longer form. A little more in depth. Yeah, yeah. A little more substance to it. Right. Yeah. Use that as like the teaser, the, the, you know, like the worm on the hook. Yeah. And then, totally. And then bring them in. So that's kind of the goal and cool. I've got a lot to learn there and, um, you know, I'm hoping it kind of gains some traction, obviously. And um, you know what? Like when you're in your forties, like we are, and you're starting to learn, you're trying, trying to learn like, yeah, this dude. social media stuff. I'm like, I gotta, oh no, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get like an intern from like the high school or something like yeah. that. I mean, it's a ton of work. Dude. It's so much work. It's a lot of work. Like I've when, got... when people start YouTube channels or they start podcasts like i'll see podcasts pop up here and there and i'll listen to it I'm like oh that's decent i'm like we'll see how long it goes right right like back in the day i had the conversation with uh, out of bounds mike powell yeah. and wintry mix and this was a SIA. i don't know how many years ago and we were like the four that were doing it okay and we were yeah. like you know there's gonna be lots more coming and and i was like yeah great you know yeah it's just gonna raise the level up and it's just gonna bring more attention to it yeah but i know how much work goes into this because this is just as much like the amount of work that you put in just to present something that is polished and good and entertaining right. and, and to your acceptable quality that you want to present. Right. I do the same thing and it's so much work Yeah, and I know that. So someone that wants to start doing a podcast cause it's cool and they're maybe good at it, but maybe they don't have the, the ability to put in all that work or the time or the energy and they get through it. Like, this is fun, but like, wow, this is a little overwhelming and you see them, the projects kind of drop off. Right. So that's where like the consistency is key. Yeah. Being able to have people know that there's going to be an episode every Thursday or right. are like, I know I'm going to see a clip from Josh. That's going to be an unbelievable, like ridiculous line that I could never even imagine to ski myself, but he's done like another one and another one and another one. And right. it's entertaining. And it's just what I've come, like you said at the beginning of this conversation with expectations, Right. this is what I expect from him because he set that bar. Right. for himself right <laughs> right and that takes so much work and so yeah. much time yeah yeah but like you're smiling it seems like you love it i don't know if you do anything different yeah i do love it man and the reality for me is that i would be pushing myself and do skiing like this whether i was sponsored whether there was an instagram you know i was skiing like this before i had sponsors and before i had instagram mm-hmm. or facebook or any of this stuff so it's like people that like to call me out. Oh, you're just doing that for likes. Well, you're an idiot if you think that. The guy who's but, sitting on the john, yeah, looking, exactly. looking at you do rad shit while he's yeah. taking a poop. You know. Yeah, dude. Right on, cool, bro. Yeah. Glad you have the opportunity to have a say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, positive feedback there, pal. But you know what, though, he's watching. Yeah. He's getting. You're getting clicks. You're getting numbers from it. He's gonna watch it. He may have yeah. some shit to say because he's unhappy. In his own life. Right. You know, maybe he's a little blocked up and he's having a bad day. So he's <laughs> taking it out with his thumbs, you know what I mean? But he's yeah. still, haters are still watching. Yeah. But they, like, it is a lot of jealousy probably as well too. Like I, I bet you so that guy too. wishes he was doing that kind of thing. And I think people also are, just think it's easy. Like, oh, this guy just got this easy privileged life. He just goes skiing every day with his boys and they just ski powder every day and this and that. You know, I think they're people think that about pro skiers mm-hmm. and like think that it's just like this easy life and like, yeah, you know, we don't have to work and we just ski. It's like, dude, I'm working my ass off like, yeah. and every like, day. And it's like, you just explained, well, how do you get there? How do you figure out how to get there? How do you plan to get there? Right. What do you do when you're there to collect this stuff? Right. There's the work to get up and do the skiing. And then there's all the emails. Oh, like dude. being a pro skier is a job. They, I don't think a lot of people realize how many freaking emails and how much computer time you actually have to have in order to make these trips happen in order to facilitate you know getting sponsored money or funding or like 100 percent. yeah like there's a lot that goes into it too it's a full-time job full-time job for sure and uh i'm getting distracted by wifey yeah yeah (laughs) you can say hi we're we're just we're just shutting her down we got a camera right there we've got about two minutes What's uh give your sh- your sponsors a shout out? Let's, let's see like dogs ready for a walk. I think it's time. You guys got some appointments too, and we're about an hour in. So yeah, obviously Solomon. Yeah, first and foremost, biggest thanks to Solomon. You know for 
supporting me from the beginning, believing in me, giving me the opportunity to do the Mountain State Project, to do the things I love. Um, second would be Hestra Gloves. I've been with Hestra for about five years now. And, you know, gloves are, it's funny how it's like such an important thing for me. I've always got like three sets of gloves in my pack. I've mm-hmm. got like the super warm ones, like the medium temp ones, and then the super light ones. Um, I don't think that people think about gloves enough. I won't. I don't ski without an extra pair of gloves in my back, and they've come in handy so many times. Especially where I live, where it, if it's wet, pow, like they just soak through, no matter how good your gloves are. Right. But having that second pair of gloves, I have a thin pair in my pocket, and I've got two. That's something that I don't really hear a lot of discussion about, but that's like so so important. It's so important, and like it's like as important as having a puffy in the pack to me, mm-hmm. like because conditions change like that, and you you need to be ready for it. And then uh, lastly would be intuition liners, mm-hmm. keeping my feet happy. You know, I struggled for years and years, like when my feet would hurt so bad when you're skiing and it's just like, it makes it not fun and you, <laughs> when all you feel is pain, pain when you're like ripping down the mountain, it like takes away a lot of the fun. So intuition liners changed my life straight up for real like no exaggeration and i'm very grateful for that um and kind of side call out or thank you would be to travel nevada they hopped in and helped out with the last mountain state too Mm -hmm. um they've been awesome to work with and like i was saying before with those vistas and those scenic shots and landscapes they're probably like oh nice work yeah yeah are you doing it again next year it was a cool um (laughs) The woman who I work with there, Keely, sent me uh, an email last week. We just won an award for like, uh, she won an award, Travel Nevada won an award for like best advertising at some sort of... uh, Award summit or like travel summit or something. Yeah, like all these... Marketing summit. Marketing summit. um, And I think it was like countrywide summit or... Using your footage? Yeah. And so like Mountain State, our film, like won an award... And, well, they won an award for Mountain State because they believed in the project and backed it. And so that was cool. Um, That's great. An extra little layer of like... Yeah, extra little... Little pat on the back, <laughs> right? Little, okay, I'm doing I'm doing the right thing. A little yeah. bit more of like, okay, this is good. This is working. Yeah, so that was cool. I know, and I know you don't do it for awards, but they're nice, aren't they? Yeah, of course, man. Let you know, you know, because how else do you know if people are paying attention, if you're doing a good job, all these things, you know, so... The comments, the thumb warriors. <laughs> <laughs> the thumb warriors. So, awesome. So we can warriors. expect uh, in the fall, Mountain State 3, potentially? Mountain State 3, it's been a little bit of a struggle as the Mountain State Project tends to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's always a battle with weather. And the thing with these remote ranges is it's hard to get good forecasts. Oh, because, yeah, there's no one out there doing forecasts. There's no one really gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, we get we get skunked on weather a lot. You know, like be like, oh, we got five days of blue with cold temps. Let's go. And then you go out there, and it's just clagged and cloudy for three of the five days. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've got an interesting storyline. I've kind of been thinking about where I want to take the project, and... I kind of came up with this idea a little too late. So we do have a couple trips done and we've got some footage, not quite enough to put together a piece, I don't think. We're gonna try another trip next week, so. It's coming though. We'll see, yeah. it's coming, it might turn into a two year project. I've got another project that I've been working on as well. Um, it's a film about the Caldor fire. Oh, cool. Which is the crazy wildfire. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of acres that burned but it basically burned from placerville an hour west all the way up to here past beyond my house if you step out the door it's all black trees all burned mm-hmm. and it like damaged like the uh, infrastructure over at sierra Tahoe, yeah. the mountain itself yeah and the ski yeah. resort burned and uh you know it it's just a story about the fire um our community and things that kind of happened and like what uh kind of the new playground it's opened up as well and you know i kind of thought like as our forest got burned it's like dude our playground is going to be demoed and it's it's just kind of created like a new light and a new a new experience for me and my own home and place that i've been skiing for a long time and 
kind of opens up terrain too, right? Yeah, and we really- we had a fire in Blackholm um, a decade ago, fifteen years ago. Um, a forest, a lightning strike hit Blackholm right in the crystal zone. Yeah, and I was driving Hummers then, like as tour guide, like oh, okay. in the old army Hummers, cut the tops off, put roll bars, and then big seats. So yeah, yeah. I was on the other side of the valley with a group. And we rolled up to this kind of lookout landing, which had black home perfectly framed, and you could see the smoke coming out of uh, coming off of the hill. Yeah, you see the helicopters bombing, and just chaos yeah. around it. Yeah, yeah. And I was looking at the zone, and I was like, I think that's burning into CBC, which was this kind of steep spot right off the top of Crystal through the trees, which was always great, but it was so t- always so tight. Uh-huh. And I was like is that burning CBC? And we went up the next winter and it cleared out all of the brush, cleared out all of the thing. And it was just like way better. It was like burnt, burnt tree spikes. And you could now just rip through that zone. So it was like the perfect, the perfect is silver lining. Perfect instant. It didn't burn the the lift, which is, which is fortunate. They put it out really quick because it's like Whistler black home. Like everybody, yeah. Every single all hands res- on deck. Every single resource was on yeah. it, but it cleared out that zone better than you could ever do yourself sure and it became so so good yeah so now over here i'm sure there's a lot of that as well we are like oh this wasn't this didn't really go before but now it does yeah totally it so definitely that, is that'd be cool so that's is and that is that more of a is that kind of a, a story slash ski film or more of a story film is there skiing involved in it uh lots of skiing sweet it's both nice yeah story and skiing but uh yeah, I'm I'm really excited. We worked super hard on this piece, and uh, I think it's going to be really good. And cool. And is that something we'll see in that's, the fall? Potentially? That's going to be coming out this fall for sure. Oh, awesome, awesome. So right on, man. Yeah, excited well, to share that one with everyone, and I think we got some insane skiing in it, like really sick, like you know, powder porn type stuff, nice. just like you know, pillow dongers and burn trees, and like really fun skiing, uh, really playful, and then. You know, the story aspect is, we won't get into it now, but pretty heavy. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, excited to share that one with everyone. And it's going to be sick. Exciting. Exciting. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's of good, course. good to catch up real quick and uh, go check out some of his rad skiing. Go follow yeah, him on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> check it out. One track mind. Thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah, dude. You've been listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. This has been a Redmark Media production. 